myself, Dr. Shantanu R. Joshi, a clinician, a pharmacologist and a drug researcher. Dear students, welcome to Acure Life Science Foundation. Please like, share and subscribe. Keep watching. Happy learning. Dear students, now we will discuss about a new ECG. This is the third ECG of 2022. See, as usual, you have to find out the P wave. One should find out the P wave properly in lead second. And if it is present, say that. And if it is normal, say that heart is beating in sinus rhythm. In this ECG, heart is beating in sinus rhythm. Then the second thing is that you have to count the number of large squares in between the two R waves. That is what we call RR interval. It is around 4. You can calculate it here also. It is around 4. Or you can calculate it here also. It is around 4. It is little more than 4. Then our equation is 300 divided by this 4 is equal to 75 and that's why the heart rate of this ECG is little more than 75. You can call it normal heart rate. Then sinus rhythm, normal heart rate. The third thing I always used to tell you is the axis. Lead 1 is positive, lead 2nd is also positive, lead 3rd is also positive. All are positive, axis is normal. Lead 1 positive, 2 positive, 3 positive, axis is normal. Now, the next thing that very easily you will find out in the ECG is that you may find that this ST is little elevated here. You will find that the ST segment is little elevated here. Even in AVF it is elevated in lead 3rd it is elevated, in lead 2 it is excellently elevated. Now all of you know that when ST is elevated then the first and the most common thing that come in the mind is acute myocardial infarction. Now my dear student this ECG is a very peculiar ECG where this ST elevation is not due to acute myocardial infarction because this is just ST elevated and ST segment is concave. Concave. This is known as non myocardial ST elevation. Non myocardial ST elevation is also known by the name early repolarization. Early repolarization. Now you may ask me, sir, why you are calling it early repolarization? I would like to repeat this is a concave. This is a concave ST. And a concave ST doesn't show you. Acute myocardial infarction. There must be either flat or convex ST elevation. And that's why this is the one thing why it is not acute myocardial infarction. Second important thing is that if you are getting ST elevation in the inferior leads, in the lateral leads or in the anterior leads, you should get ST depression. One should get ST depression. And such ST depression is not seen in any of the anterior leads or any of the inferior leads. Any of the uh, lateral leads. Lateral lead means lead 1, AVL, V5 and V6. And that is the reason this is only a repolarization, early repolarization. Now, you may ask me sir, what is the meaning of this early repolarization? Many times this early repolarization is a change which is common with a young adult individual. Now I will comment on this early repolarization at last. Now the next thing that I see in the ECG is related with this V1. Very easily in this V1 you will find that this is R wave, this is S wave 
and this is R1. The same thing you will find in this V2. This is R wave, this is S wave and this is R1. In very simple language, this ECG is showing you R, this ECG is showing you R dash S dash R1 pattern. R dash S dash R1 pattern is related with right bundle branch block right bundle branch block RBBB. Now a point is very important. It is not complete RBBB because to define complete RBBB the QRS duration should be greater than 0 0.12 seconds. That is three small squares should be there of QRS complex. Very, very easily you can see that this is only one or one or one and a half QRS complexes there. And that's why this is incomplete RBBB. I am repeating R dash S dash R1 pattern is present, but it is not the wide QRS complex. The wide QRS complex means the QRS complex exceeding 0.12 seconds. That is three small squares should it should exit, but it is not there, and that's why we'll call it incomplete RBBB. I see RBBB. Now, this is again non-conclusive. This is a variant of normal, many times again seen in the young individual, or many times in old individuals also. The third thing that I must tell you, and that is the tall R waves. You can see in V5 or in V6, we'll calculate in this one, this is 1, this is 2, this is 3, this is 4, this is 5 and this is more than that 5. Now my point is very important, when the height of R wave, when the height of R wave is greater than 25 millimeters in V5 or V6, any one of them, then it is a, it is likely to be a case of LVH, that is left ventricular hypertrophy. But, but is very important, it should be accompanied by T wave inversion in the lateral leads. I am repeating. The height of R wave should exceed 35, 25 millimeters in V5 or V6. But it should be accompanied by T wave inversion, inverted T waves in lead 1, in lead AVL, AVL and V5 and V6. But none of them are showing you inverted T waves. And generally, the left ventricular hypertrophy generally is associated with left axis deviation. Now, it is neither related with, it is not showing left axis deviation, it is not showing you T wave inversion, it is only showing you higher amplitude of R wave in V5 and V6. And this is how, my dear students, this is not the ECG showing you left ventricular hypertrophy. Now, I would like to tell you about this ECG. This is an ECG showing you repolarization, early repolarization. This is also showing you incomplete RBBB and this is showing you tall R waves not concluding left ventricular hypertrophy. In very simple language, this ECG is actually non-conclusive. This ECG is likely to be a variant of normal which is seen in young adult individual. This is the ECG of a 26 years old male giving you, giving, presenting intermittent chest pain. There might be some psychological cause but one thing I should tell you about early repolarization in the recent studies. The sudden cardiac death is associated with this early repolarization changes. And that is a thing that suggests me for this young individual of 26 years to go with 
electrophysiological monitoring of the case electrophysiological assessment of this patient is important so as to conclude something thank you dear students for being with me for such a good time thank you